Hello and welcome. This is video number four in the Story Lab. And we're talking about, let's move this out of the way. There we go. We're talking about what is, we're still talking about story listening, but we're talking about your stories. We're talking about looking over your shoulder into your past, into yesterday and last year and 10 years ago. We're looking for those things that make you who you are, the brand called you. We're actually seeking to find your superpower. You might already have a really firm handle on what that is, but remember, this is a story driven process. There will come a time where somebody says to you, so what makes you the person that I should come to for this kind of service, this kind of work? And you might know that that person simply needs to hear what makes you remarkable, where your superpowers come from. This exercise, more about what is, not what your customer story is, but what your story is, what your origin story is, what the source of all that love, where it springs from. So I I live in Tucson, Arizona. Here in Tucson, there's the University of Arizona, which is a big deal. The University of Arizona is one of the biggest employers, some 50,000 people there. Um, the other big industry here in Tucson is healthcare. Um, in the wintertime, um, people from the Midwest uh, come here to their winter home um, and they need healthcare. So the university hospital and all the medical clinics and ophthalmologists and gerontologists, that's the second biggest industry here in Tucson. The third biggest industry is um, Raytheon, aerospace, uh, making bombs and stuff like that. But I mentioned the University of Arizona because about a year ago, I took a tour of a uh, department um, in the Department of Dendrochronology. And dendrochronology is a field of study that was invented at the University of Arizona. And that field of study is the study of tree rings. I went on this tour led by a docent, um, looked at a lot of very large slabs of wood, looked at the rings, but when we went upstairs, we ended up talking to a PhD from Italy, um, classic professor type, you know, gray hair, ponytail, beard, uh, glasses on top of his head. Um, looked like he had just come from an archeological dig because what he was holding in his hand was a timber that was uh, preserved because of the, the, the heat and the gases of the volcano Vesuvius in Italy. He was holding a timber that had been excavated from a place, a building that was standing when the volcano erupted hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Thousands of years ago, actually. And his body of work in the Department of Dendrochronology was to look at the rings in that piece of timber, timbers from a tree, this timber would have rings in it. And when he looks at these rings, he could try and say, well, Vesuvius, the earthquake happened in this year and this month, this piece of timber would have been fallen in the forest and brought to erect this building within a few years. And as I look at the tree rings, some of the rings are narrow, some of them are wide. Um, there's scarring in one of the rings, which might uh, be a drought or a, a fire. And then he would take the written record of what people living in that time had left us about that time. And if it talked about drought, he'd look at the timber and try to line up the year of the drought with the look of the rings and say, oh, there. There's the drought, that's the ring, that's where it began, and it lasted this long. 
the fascinating thing about the Department of Dendrochronology is that we all know what carbon dating is. You know, scientists discover a cave in Chouvet, France, in the hillside. They go in the cave and they see these miraculous carvings, not carvings, paintings of animals galloping across the field. Different types of animals that don't exist today. And they go in and they use carbon dating to tell us how old the charcoal that was used to draw these pictures, how old that charcoal is. It's pretty sophisticated stuff, carbon dating. They discovered that those paintings in Chouvet, France, that tell the story of that day and time about the hunt and the animals they were hunting, what the shamans were doing in that cave, were 40,000 years old. The thing about radiocarbon dating is, we can't have radiocarbon dating without the science of dendrochronology because the tree rings allow us to mark time. The tree rings allow us to set the clock that the radiocarbon dating technology uses to tell us how old that charcoal on that wall in that cave is. My mind was blown. At the same time I was taking that tour I was thinking an awful lot about storytelling and I was thinking an awful lot about how we, when we look inward, when we listen to our own stories, how important it is for us to be like the PhD from Italy holding the timber from Vesuvius was when he looked at it and he could look at the writings from the day and look at the timber in his hand and say, ah, there's the ring that represents the drought. He could tell the story of that piece of wood, that timber, and where that piece of wood shows a drought, a fire, etc. The history of the wood spoke to the history of the people living in Vesuvius at that day and time. That same kind of effort, the same kind of introspective work is the work that we're doing together to find your origin story, the heart of what makes you the brand called you, lives in those origin stories. And well, here's, here's a better example. Um, I love talking about this stuff, so I'll just go on and on and on. Um, what better way to talk about the rings that humans have than to look at the tree itself. Here in the center of the tree, Right about here, 1148 AD. Old tree, right? Here's a point in the tree where the Magna Carta was signed. Great document from the United, United Kingdom. The first time modern laws were put in place. Significant fire scarred the tree here in 1341. 1492. You know, I remember in elementary school singing a song about Columbus and the, the, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria and celebrating him in New Jersey, where I'm from. New Jersey has a lot of Italians, so Columbus Day was a big deal. It wasn't until very much later that I realized that the indigenous people that lived here before Columbus got here didn't need to be discovered. Different conversation, but somebody marked this ring on this tree as the year Columbus landed in America. Then Drake lands in California about a hundred years later and on and on and on. This tree from 1148 to 1919, before it was cut and laid on its side, existed for about 800 years. And each year we can tell what was going on in the world and we could tell what the climate was doing around this tree at that very same time. Um, our opportunity is, I know this is corny, but work with me here, to think of ourselves as trees. We have the years that we've been on the planet and each year we have things that were 
ripe with satisfaction. Oh my gosh, it was a fantastic year. Maybe we moved with our family one year and it was stressful because we left our school and had to go to a new school and teenagers always have difficult times making new friends, leaving old friends. That year, what does the ring look like? What do we remember about that year? How did we get over the move? Who helped us? Did we help ourselves? Did we read a book that said, don't worry about it, it's gonna be fine. And we believe what the book said, so we were able to be fine. We're looking for those mentors, those influencers, those guides, those books, those writings, those teachings, those moments where we sat in the church pew and heard a message that moved us. The time we sat with our grandparent and, and they told us about something going on in the garden and how food was raised and how important it was to have connection to the earth that never left us. We are looking for those memories those things that when we look back over our shoulder that we may not think about every day, but we're going to think about now. And we're going to take them and we're going to categorize them. We're going to place these kinds of experiences over here. These are the experiences with my grandparents and my aunts and uncles, right? My mother and father's family. These are the things I learned when I was with them. And here's my friends in the neighborhoods that I've grown up in. Some of them I still know today. Some have moved away, but I remember when she said this, to me, it hurt me, but I learned how to bounce back. That's a lesson. I learned how to bounce back. Each lesson, each person, each writing, each book, each moment has impact on making us who we are today. That's where our origin story springs from. The same way the dendrochronologist and the PhDs looking at trees can mark time throughout the history of humans on this planet and tell the story of the planet and its climate and the climate change. Um, you know, I can talk about this all day because it's fascinating to me. And we're talking about the power of story. We're talking about the rings of the tree, but we're also talking about the roots that make you who you are. Those memories from 20 years ago, they're deep seated roots that when we hold on to them and we cherish them, when we look at this sheet of paper where we've written all of these ideas and influencers and guides and mentors and writings down and we spread them out, we're looking for the relationships. We're looking for the ones that this was a good moment, but I don't carry that forward today, but this one and this one and this one, oh my gosh, I've forgotten about them, but they certainly impact who I am today and what I believe. They provide the lane that I live in. I don't say these things. I don't do those things. I stay in this lane. And when I stay in that lane, as a leader, the people that I am in service to and the businesses that I serve will look at me and say, she's always in her lane. We know she's always going to be in that lane. And that's a good place to be. Because when we ask her a question, she's not going to overreact. She might come from a stressful moment, but when she meets with us, she's gonna be the same, calm, full of love, connected to our mission, caring about us. That's what integrity is. And integrity lives in our rings, in our memories, in our lessons, in our roots. Zig Ziglar is like Napoleon Hill to some people. Um, I read a little bit of his stuff, not a lot, but I read this and it stuck with me. The past is your lesson. Tree rings. The present is your gift. The here and now. The future is our motivation. The future is this business plan, this lean canvas that we're going to build. We're listening to the stories. We're building with the stories that story doing. We're going to tell the story of our offer to the world to the ideal prospects whose story we know so well that we know what words to use. We know where to find them. We know how to talk to them. We know what they want to hear. And that is our motivation. And we build this plan. So when it's time to sell, I rather call it collaborating to co-create. Because we collaborate with the businesses and the people we serve to co-create for them the optimal solutions that serve them 
so they can go off and create more. And whatever they pay us for that, they get exponential rewards in return. They pay us $100, they get $10,000 of value. That's the business that we're in. This is where it begins with the origin story. Then we have the founding story. Then we have the customer story. Then we have the product story. There's the evolution story we'll get to as well. I'm scrolling down because I want to get to this. There's an author that I've enjoyed reading over the years, Seth Gooden. He's a prolific writer. I don't know how many books he's written, maybe 30. All talking about marketing in general, but really just the process of being human and and just less tech, thinking about less technology and more about thinking about what it means to be human. And one of his books was called Purple Cow. You may have read it. And he's from New York. Um, he's traveling with his family in a little Volkswagen through the hills on the countryside in the south of France. Mediterranean on the right, hillside on the left, lavender spreading up the hills, but occasionally they see a herd of black and white cows. The scenery could not be more beautiful. The family drives and drives. They've got hours to go. Ocean on the right, or the Mediterranean on the right. Beautiful hillside with black and white cows on the left. Kids in the back starting to get a little anxious. The long ride. The husband says to his wife, Seth says to his wife, kids are getting anxious. You know, it would be really cool if we turn this next corner. And as we turned, all these black and white cows were there. But among those black and white cows, we looked and on the hillside, there was a purple cow. And he asked his wife, what would we do? She said, we'd stop the car. He said, yeah, we'd probably get our cell phones out and take a picture so our friends would believe us when we told them we saw a purple cow. Who's ever seen a purple cow? The wife said, we'd probably get out and take a selfie with the kids so the kids could tell their friends they too saw a purple cow. Seth said we'd probably look for a farmhouse and if we saw it, we might drive up the road to the farmhouse to ask the farmer, how in the world did you get such a remarkable cow, a purple cow of all things? The moral of this story in this little tiny book that Seth wrote is that each of us has the same opportunity to be like that purple cow because we are. My thumbprint is mine. No one else has it. It's like a snowflake. Each snowflake is uniquely different from all the other gazillions of snowflakes that fall from the sky. Of the seven billion plus people on the planet, nobody else is like Arthur. You might have the same name, Arthur Jones, and you're part of the Jones clan. There's a lot of Arthur Joneses out there, but no one's like me. And now because of my origin story, I know why I'm unique. I know what makes me remarkable. And what makes me remarkable fuels my ability to do the work that I do in the business that I founded. Our goal in your origin story is to find out what makes you remarkable. And the term remarkable is worthy of being or likely to be noticed, especially as being uncommon or extraordinary. I'm extraordinary because of 7 billion people on the planet. No one else is like me. 20 years ago, I don't know if I actually owned that. Now I do, and it fuels me. It enables me to do things that I believe are remarkable. To take the vision for using storytelling to help people in business accomplish more. And wanting to do that to thousands of people over the course of the next several years. And I have the confidence that I can do that. And I have the confidence that I know that their lives will be changed in a positive way. My goal with you is to enable you to feel the same empowerment. Now, I know you already do. I've read your book. You've had amazing transformation in your life. I think the work we're doing together is to liberate even more of the amazing things that you've accomplished in your life, the things that now we look over your shoulder and see and we pull forward into today to support you in the work that you do and to provide stories for that one person that needs to hear the story about you that reminds them of themselves so they know that if you can do it, maybe they can too. And 
They agree to work with you and you have the opportunity to change their life. Seth broke the word remarkable down into three syllables, remarkable. And when we look at our tree rings, we look at our, our life history for the influencers and the mentors and the guides that have helped us get to where we are today, provide us the lane that represents our integrity, our heart, our gut instinct. That is the North Star that guides everything that we do. Seth said, each of us has the opportunity to find that thing about ourselves or those things about ourselves that people will remark upon, that will find those things about us remarkable. Um, I think that this is an important part of this journey. I've spent longer on this video than perhaps I needed to, but hopefully it impresses upon you the way it has impacted me in my work, that the lane that I exist in, the integrity that drives me, the North Star that guides me comes from the work that I've done on my origin story. And I hope it impacts you in the same way. Um, of course, we'll talk about that as we go forward. Um, thanks for listening to this long, long video about tree rings and, uh, and the work that we're doing on origin story. Hope this helps. Okay, so stay tuned. Video number five is coming up. Peace.